what classes they brought. Oh, right, yeah. Well, I'll oh. just stop him waffling, shall we? <laughs> I've got to try and do that throughout the show. Uh, Cold Hands is bringing Warlock, Priest, and Shaman. Rogue is banned away, and Lemon has Druid, Paladin, Priest. You can see it. Rogue banned on both sides, though, Darok. Uh, so I think that's actually something you mentioned. You said you were expecting Rogue bands this week. Is there any reason why we're seeing Rogue bands? Is it just one of those things where it's good against various... Other classes. So I think it's uh, twofold that we're starting. Twofold that we're starting to see um, <laughs> more uh, rogues banned. It's because of the rising popularity of Dragon Priest, and Rogue is a terrible matchup for that deck, and the rising popularity of uh, Murloc Paladin, and Rogue is also a pretty poor matchup for that deck. So because those are both pretty powerful decks when coupled together to defeat Jade Druid and Kazakus Priest, I think putting those in your lineup, banning Rogue, is kind of the strategy I'm looking forward to most today. Uh, and then for Cold Hands, if that Warlock is a zoo, it's pretty similarly functioning to the Murloc Paladin. Just does pretty badly against the Rogue, but pretty well against most of the other slightly slower decks. It has been strange, but also good to see Dragon Priest kind of rise to oh, the ranks yeah. again. Was it Mitsuhide who brought it to a really high legend rank? We had players play it last week, didn't we? And struggle a little bit. It was, it was interesting to see people try and pilot it. Well, uh, when it's when, when it's one of these decks that is right. reaches legend, and then people just think, okay, I'll play it. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's it was a, strange. It, it's a really tough deck to play. I've been playing it all week, and the Mulligan phase in particular is incredibly difficult because there's so many synergies within the uh, within the deck. Is um, Cold Hands Sub Zero, or is that just a blue screen mask? I can't really tell the difference. Well, it's interesting because his hands look fine. It's his face that looks <laughs> a little bit cold, a little bit blue, a little bit down, a little bit. Should yeah. we say? Uh, but well, that'll be why. Yeah, that's why patches mm. is drawn are never good. Um, so we are seeing Jade Druid rather so than uh, any other variants. Uh, going up against, of course, the Token Shaman. It's going to be good. Spreading Plague, really important in this matchup. doesn't really matter too much that it's now six mana rather than five mana either. Yeah, the, the Shaman bringing it here and banning Rogue feels like a not necessarily super intuitive strategy. I definitely don't want to call it wrong because the Shaman isn't particularly amazing or terrible against the Rogue. And it's got, you know, decent shots against the uh, Druid, not so much against the Priest. Uh, but, you know, one of the main reasons you bring it is because it's a deck that can stand up to Rogue and there's not many of those floating about. Cold Hands has got warm now. That was it. That was it. He turned and the radiator on. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> he's not committing to it anymore. Uh, but I do appreciate the players getting it in the Halloween spirit as well. That's nice that they're involved. Shame we couldn't uh, do such a thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just coming with the usual boring This is just what I've been wearing higher. all day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's my alter ego. Oh, you laugh. <laughs> you laugh, but it is. <laughs> I mean, the way your wife reacted, I wouldn't be surprised if she <laughs> <laughs> would become an alter ego. Uh, well, things are happening. Which is always, uh, see this is the problem when you are in this place with Shaman and you've kind of got a devolve in hand and you right. don't want to do it against, of course, uh, this kind of board because that is such a, a, a poor minion yep. to evolve on the other side. Um, so it just seeming like trading is the right choice here. Oh yeah, I mean, with this deck, uh, Devolve is most powerfully coupled when you can either kill off Aya, obviously, but uh, usually uh, getting rid of a Spreading Plague and then going for a Bloodlust Lethal or yep. something like that is when it's uh, most often uh, used effectively, especially because of Mark of the Lotus now. And you will very often see against a Shaman, the Jade Druid will go Spreading Plague, one or two Mark of the Lotuses, and then the Devolve will come down and absolutely destroy that. So I imagine Cold Hands will be saving that for his ace in the hole, which will then give him the the liberty to go nice and wide on the board. Yeah, and the trouble is for Cold Hands at the moment as well as he's got all this late game stuff. He's got IO, he's got Bone there, but mm -hmm. nothing to play next turn. It yeah. will just be a simple uh, hero power unless he draws something significant. Uh, Lemon was considering there, do I nourish for ramp and then use the wrath? But instead, he thought he would just use his hero power instead. So uh, strange. Maybe he wants to use the nourish for card draw a little bit later. Rather so, he doesn't see it that important to be ramping up too much early on. Yeah, you just don't really have the payoff. Considering that Malfurion is going to be coming down in the next couple of turns anyway, uh, you know, if, if he drew Ultimate Infestation on the next card, obviously he'd be wishing that he'd gone for the ramp there to use up as much mana as possible. But given that you have the uncertainty, he's definitely saving it back for the draw, which I think is probably correct, because uh, if the, the opponent gets down a mana tide that you can't deal with, all of a sudden you're going to be so far behind on card resources. More cards there that help in this matchup as well. Mind Control Tech, mm -hmm. of course. Do you, do you Spreading Plague here? Are you happy with three one fives? Uh, I'm usually happy with three. I think that's my minimum. When it's two, I don't want to do it unless it's kind of a uh, dangerous panic yeah. situation. So obviously Spreading Plague is the strongest play onto the board right now, and that's why he's going to go for it. And this is why I think it's probably the right way to go. But the thing is with Nourish, it's obviously a weak play onto the board now, but 
it's kind of looking to me like for the foreseeable future, you're not going to be in any better position. Uh, I guess the Spreading Plague uh, maybe can take out a few things. So yeah, probably actually going for the Spreading Plague spreading plague right here, probably Malfurion next turn, and then follow up with the Nourish. Probably seems a bit better to me, even though it was worth considering going for the Nourish while there's only two attack power on the yeah. opponent's board. And this, uh, for, for a second I was thinking this Spell Totem here, that Wrath of Air would on, be able to help out, use Jade Lightning, take out one of these 1-5s, but... Goldhand's quite rightly just coining out, getting more power on the board, because I think he needed that. He was starting to fall behind a little bit. It's interesting. Going for Firefly Jade Lightning wouldn't be that bad there, because I, uh, you know, obviously Jade Lightning is also only summoning a 1-1, one, one, so that probably makes it too weak of a play, and Aya does still get you the 5-3 body, but it's not that much of a commitment onto the board right here, and now you are all of a sudden pretty weak to mind control tech. Yeah, but do you use it? Because oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's the thing right now. I'd, you're tempted to. You probably clear off the Wrath of Air Totem if you're going to play the Mind Control tech, but it just doesn't work with the mana, right? Um, and you can safely think, going up against a Vol Shaman, there will be another chance yeah. I'm going to be able to play this Mind Control tech a little bit later. And Aya's not going to die anytime soon as well, yeah. so you still have that potential of stealing uh, in a later turn. And I think Cold Hands will be uh, thinking to himself as well, you know, the Druid's been playing very slow, so their hand's probably full of some quite expensive cards, uh, like Malfurion, Ultimate Infestation, Nourish, things like that. Uh, so if they do have a Mind Control tech, they probably won't want to go for it, considering it's such a weak play onto the board, if they can't utilize the rest of their mana. So Cold Hands, I think now is the right time to go for more than four minions on the board, because your uh, all your minions are so weak. Yeah risk and reward kind of situation. I was trying to work out what card is on the wall behind him, Cold Hands. Uh, I might have to ask him afterwards. You haven't seen that in a previous week of Hearthstone, have you? The I'm not even seeing it now. No, well, his head's in the way now, but oh, when, right. when he tilts a little bit later, not tilt in that way, but when he tilts his head, you know what I mean? Maybe you'll see the card. You're losing your mind. You're spending too much time in the upside down, aren't you? I am indeed. I am indeed. Devolve now starting to look more worthwhile, but still a little bit meh. So you're giving your opponent one drops? Yeah. Which, you know, uh, as an average of about what a 1-1-2-1, one, 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 something like that, it trades pretty well uh, with your board that you can throw down. But you just got to think about what else you can do that makes it worth it. It's mainly, I think, just the Evolve that is being considered here. Because if you can give yourself a really powerful board that's difficult to kill off, obviously that gives you uh, big benefits going into a Bone Mare turn. So I think the main priority is just how do I guarantee something is on the board next turn, no matter what. Yeah, you, you really want the Maelstrom Portal to uh, combine with de Devolve in right. this situation. I don't like Evolve here, but I completely understand your reasoning why you might want to. Um, just to, as you said, to keep something alive for Bone there. So that's going to be the yep. big decision. Cold Hands is going to go for it. Uh, try and go for a big play here. It's not the best. It's not the worst either. Mm. I think I say that every single time, though. That's kind of the way it goes, the, isn't it? It's like, yeah. oh, it's an, it's an okay evolve, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's kind of the way that things average out, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the, mm, the, the big old snack is... Mi mixed feelings. I mean, you're getting a 5-5 when it dies, which obviously isn't bad, Our but denying yourself web. the whole point of this play in leading yourself up to a Bone Mare. Yeah, it's essentially a 9-9 that yeah. you're destroying from your opponent when you bring on that Bone Mare. Uh, of course, Lemon's not going to know that, though. He'll be thinking, well, what could he pull uh, from his hand? Is there anything else that is big enough that could come out from the snake? Um, Aya's come down, Bone Mare's there, Thing From Below, I think, thing is basically below, the main okay. thing, yeah. And again, that, and Which so would be great for yeah. Cold Hands if that does come down. Ooh, Armorsmith is pretty fantastic to get. Obviously, there is the Devolve, which is like, you know, props to Cold Hands for saving it for this long. Yeah, this works out really well for Lemon. Uh, the armor, as you said, is pretty good. A, because you're against a fairly aggressive deck. And now you've just beaten one of his main tools as well of getting ahead on the board. Yeah. So Lemon will be very happy with that outcome. Yeah, trading in here as well is Lemon to try and uh, mitigate the uh, how bad Devolve is for him, which I think is definitely the right thing to do. Keep yourself nice and far ahead on the board. Devolve obviously is going to come down, which is kind of why it's not quite so bad that the Bone Mare was pulled from hand. Uh, but... Well, actually, a pretty good devolve for Lemon. That's definitely yeah. above average. That's Card quite a draw, lot above average, actually. And a succubus as well. 4-3 or three is a really decent body for the yeah. mana cost. And uh, the Oracle is going to really help as well draw something. Uh, I mean, just adding to that element of what yep. is my opponent holding in that hand, it's always a frustrating thing to be facing against. And man, just look at the difference of Lemon's hand, given that he saved the Nourish. If he'd gone for the ramp early on, his hand, 
I mean, he's got Aya, but there, then there would be a real chance for Cold Hands to catch back up with some of his own Jade cards, um, maybe Thrall Deathseer, something like that to start pulling it back. But because there's the Nourish to follow up after the Aya, you've got such a good chance of finding Ultimate Infestation, Jade Behemoth, all that big stuff to just secure yourself a win. Uh, there's oh. more Jade cards for Lemon as well. Uh, Perfect. Just if things were... As you said, he's running out of cards. And the Nourish would have been an option, but I still think he probably would have played Aya. Mm -hmm. But that's been the main decision for this game, really, of, from Lemon earlier, is do I Nourish, don't I Nourish? He's rewarded with a Bone Mare as well. That's sick. That's disgusting. Man. Um, so what's Aya getting you? It's uh, up to a 3-3 Jade now. Um, I mean, basically, no matter what it is, it's probably worth it. Yeah, 3-3 three, three Golem. Yeah, I think it's still definitely the play over Bone Mare. It's doesn't particularly help you in this scenario. Both Bone Mare and Aya are kind of weak to a second evolve off the top, but yeah. That's interesting. Uh, wondering why... Uh, okay, I guess he just wanted to remove as many minions as possible. There was an option where he could have used his face and one of the 1-1s one uh, to trade in to the, the four health Bone Mare, and then he could have just used his other minion to trade into the totem that had health, but who gives a damn? It doesn't really matter. Lemon is proved victorious regardless. I think he'll be relatively happy with that opening, but Cold Hands, on the other hand, I'm so, I almost laughed. I forgot I looked like that for a second. Me too. Myself. Just for a split heavenly second. <laughs> I look marvelous. Uh, big shout out to my wife for uh, dressing me up like my mum. I do feel a little bit like my mum right now, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't know your mum. Yeah, well, she looks a little bit like Bob. <laughs> that's, well, that's, she sounds all right to she's me. She's lovely. She yeah. is lovely. Uh, Lemon takes game number one and now has his Paladin and Priest remaining. Cold Hands, of course, still has everything left. So he does have a Warlock there, Darok. And Warlock has had an interesting surge as of late, especially in the Trinity series, has it not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, over the past two series, uh, yesterday and the one earlier today, that's 12-0, uh, and 0, I believe it is now, uh, which is an absolute tear. I don't expect it to be doing quite so well uh, today, uh, especially given that it is not last hero standing. But even so, it's definitely had an above average performance in the Trinity series. But here, I think up against Priest, the if it's a Zoo Warlock, it's got a decent shot because of the decent, uh, good amount of late game it's got and just consistent pressure it can push through. And against the Paladin, I mean, I think it comes down more to what the Paladin is drawing because if they get the perfect Murloc curve, you're not really going to stand a chance. It's almost like I knew it was going to be Warlock here. That was a perfect lead in, Darok. Thank you for your beautiful analogy of Warlock's current situation. You're welcome. Mm. I, I assume you meant to say analysis I instead. I did, but, but I was going to was was breeze over it. Perfect uh, hosting. Thanks for perfect bringing it hosting. up. That's great. Just toss me under that bus. That's <laughs> fine. <sighs> Forget about I, it. I, I, just, I, just, I don't want to be here anymore. To be honest. But this is the Dragon Priest. It is the Dragon for Priest. For Lemon. I've been playing a lot of this deck this week, and this is not one of the matchups you really want to be facing, because obviously you can throw down Dragonfire Potion on turn six, but that's your only way of getting some AoE down onto the board. And so because of that, in order to keep up in the early stages of the game, you're really looking to get a Northshire or a Radiant Elemental to stick on the board and then just start going completely ridiculous with Power Word Shield, Divine Spirit, and Inner Fire. But because Lemon's going first here, he's unable to actually get a minion on the board until turn three, at which point it can just die because of the Blood Fury potion coming from Cold Hands. And because of that, all these buff cards like Divine Spirit and Power Word Shield are just going to be stuck for a long time. This is already not looking good for Lemon. Yeah, and really, not just in this matchup, but when you're playing this Dragon Priest as well, the Dragon Inner Fire Priest or whatever people want to call it, you really have to acknowledge what removal your opponent could have right. and count how many times yep. they remove big minions. Because there is a possibility at some point in the game to just put something like a Priest of the Feast on board, slam a Power Word Shield, slam two Divine Spirits, and then Inner Fire it, and you've Absolutely. got a 32, 32 on the board or something ridiculous like that. And if they can't remove it, you could just win the turn next, even if yep. you can't attack with it straight away. So you've definitely got to be well aware of uh, what your opponent has and also what is Cold Hands doing? That, uh, that's why he has Cold Hands. Wait, he's warming him up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, breathing on his hands. And it does look like we're having, obviously, a small spectator issue here. Um, I imagine it would be nothing other than the cold, uh, Blood Fury Potion coming down on the previous turn for Cold Hands. You just want to make sure you're ahead on the board for whatever your opponent can throw down. Maybe they have to go for just a Talon Priest. You want to be able to kill that off with a buffed up Void Walker. Maybe they have to go for Tar Creeper. You want to be able to kill that off as well. There we are. Just a nice switch into uh, a different spectator whilst we get that one fixed. Uh, but a big old 4-6 imp that's on the board now as well. Follow that with a Dreadlord. If you can get a decent curve into a Bone Mare as well, 
I mean, Coran's is looking in such a good position, and Lemon, as you said, it is difficult to get back when you're behind yep. with this Dragon Priest. And considering one of the main tools is that Dragonfire Potion, you've already got something that's above uh, 5 health. That's right. Uh, and it's at 4 attack, which makes it especially difficult because, I mean, usually you go and hit it. 4 health, yeah, 4 attack versus Priest. Very nice. Uh, I mean, you don't even run Shadow Word Pain most of the time in this deck, and very often only one Shadow Word Death uh, if it is Mitsuhide's version, which is so popular at the moment. Uh, so anything below 5 attack just can't be killed off uh, easily at all. It will have to be through something like Dragonfire Potion or just minion removal. Uh, but, you know, this is where the Dragon portion of the deck is going to start to come into play with uh, the Operative, the Scalebane, all that kind of good stuff to hopefully get enough stats on the board to fight back. And then, obviously, the Dragonfire Potion becomes more powerful when it's not destroying your own board. Yeah, I believe that Dragonfire, uh, that Dragon came off the top as well. So really important right. getting the operative there because that is what is going to help compete with this board. It was looking a little bit bleak to begin with, but actually it's starting to Ooh. lighten up a tad. But Crystal Weaver will boost both of these demons up. That's right. Yeah. And then you can attack in with the Despicable and then it kills it off with the effect. You oh, slam to face. Corruption. You are then very vulnerable to Dragonfire Potion, actually, I guess is the main thing. So maybe he's just going to sacrifice off the Malkazar's Imp here. I think he probably will end up going for that. Yeah. Yeah, just trading in, he's saying that it's more important because of, yeah, you know next turn what yep. could happen. Uh, we do apologize that we are in this version of The Spectator. We have lost the ability to spectate Lemon. I don't know if he's been a Lemon and accidentally turned off his spectator mode or something silly like that. But regardless, we'll get it sorted for the next game, and we'll just cast this game like this, Darok. So we'll cast it blind. No, we'll it's, do it it's, live! It's <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> <laughs> the meme stops there. <laughs> But yeah, it's you know it's like power lines oh, going down, know. the phone's not working. It's a Halloween edition. Exactly, it's of all ESL. getting a bit spooky in all here, isn't it? A little bit spooky. Uh, but that means we can cast the game as if we were sat in the. Dr that was a wolf that was, howling. That was yeah. a wolf howling. Just wanted to be like it's clear. Not I wolf wasn't whistling you. Yeah. Don't <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Don't get ahead of yourself, mate. I wanted to be clear that I wasn't going a little bit mad. <laughs> uh, but we can now position ourselves in the driver's seat without having cast a vision. Okay. Which actually is quite a unique position to be in, Darren. It's what a almost privilege. like we're playing the game ourselves. <laughs> God forbid. God. <laughs> yeah, no one wants that. <laughs> and, you know, what is the Dragon Priest supposed to do here? You only run one Shadow Word Death in the deck most of the time. Uh, I am basing most of my assumptions off, again, Mitsuhide's list. Uh, but with Shadow Visions, maybe you can discover another one. But it's just not going to get the job done because this is the situation you very often find yourself in against these aggressive decks where. Because cards like Bone Mare, Blood Reaver Gul'dan in the Warlock, Tyrion and Tarim in the Paladin, um, and, you know, like Bone Mares in the Rogue, there's so much late game in aggressive decks now that Dragonfire Potion on its own will very rarely get the job done. It's not going to be enough here for Lemon yeah. to just throw that down and then hope to stick a minion on the board. You know, Shadow of Death here isn't going to get it done. Is this just lethal on the board? Yep, lethal on the board with Bone Mare or and Soulfire, of course. Yeah. As long as, you do, as long as you do it in the right order, uh, which, of course, Goldhands will, and he ties up the series 1-1, one to one. unfortunately. Uh, the Dragonfire... Uh, the Dragonfire... The Dragon Priest is such an incredible deck to watch, but when you see it in that situation, it is very painful. This is maybe why, actually... I mean, I was saying before I went into this that I would be looking for basically the exact strategy that Lemon's going for, where you ban the aggressive deck in Rogue and then bring Dragon Priest to punish Kazakus Priest and Jade Druid. But because of the prevalence of Zoo and Murloc Paladin now, maybe that's just not a viable strategy because it's such a bad matchup against those two classes. Dragonfire Potion just is not enough. And unless you get a crazy hand with Radiant Elemental and all the buff cards, you're just going to be falling behind. And was that a situation where the only way uh, Lemon could have kept in that is if he'd got something like a Northshire Cleric early on that could contest the board, follow that up, maybe with a Power Word Shield. I know you like to save the Power yeah. Word Shield sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Not you personally. That's a collective One you as in what? There we go. I like that. Uh, but it was just a shame that he fell behind on board so early, really. Well, if it had been slightly different, like if he was on the coin there, he could have gone coin tar creeper into the Kabul Talon Priest. That's a really nice combo against aggressive decks. Uh, but the fact that it was such a powerful curve as well from Cold Hands means it needed to be either quite a lot better for for Lemon or just a little bit worse for Cold Hands. You know your um, eleven, <laughs> right? Yeah. As in Y O R or apostrophe R E? You are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you like supposed to have telekinesis or something? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to keep I, an eye on you. Yeah, keep an eye keep on me. Keep an mate. eye on you. You and your tricks. 
mister. Keep an eye out for s floating pens. The things that are strange. And stranger still. Yeah. Well, game number three here between Lemon and Cold Hands, then it is going to be the Murloc Paladin, which we all thought was going to die a horrible death after the nerf of the War Leader, but nope, it's still here. A Cold Light Seer, though. That seems fairly interesting. Yeah, I think it's just kind of the trend that uh, Murloc Paladin is going on, where you kind of uh, you're taking out some of the middle and bolstering both the early and the late game, like by sticking in uh, Tyrion, Bone Mares, Tarim, sometimes the Lich King even at the top end of the deck, and then making sure you lock down the early game. I think it's a really nice deck to give you two powerful win conditions, which are both like the best ways to win against Jay Druid and Kazakus Priest, where either you get an insane early game with all the Murlocs and they can't come back, or you get an insane late game because you're playing six, seven, and eight, just extreme power cards that they can't possibly come back from. 1-3 is always nice off of uh, Maelstrom Portal. God, oh, I'd yeah. be very happy with that. He'll be even more happy with the fact that Lemon didn't have any sort of 2-drop to play as well. And now Cold Hands can try and build up a board here. Firefly plus uh, Bloodsail Corsair seems pretty nice. Yeah. Happy with that? Well, I mean, you've got to be careful because damaging your own minions here, it's not oh, yeah, of the course. worst because there's nothing like Maelstrom Portal or Knife Juggler or anything like that in the deck, most likely. I mean, there might be a Knife Juggler, but I doubt it for Lemon. Uh, but it still just makes you a bit weaker to the Silverhand Recruits, which could come down. Um, yeah, going with you know, not actually playing a minion and trying to summon them instead probably seems like the best way to go. And Jade Claws, because you have powerful two drop options with either the Maelstrom or Blood Sail Corsair and Firefly on the following turn, seems like the best play to me. Yeah. Just 1-1-1 one, one, one rather than it would have been two one ones. Yeah. And having a weapon seems perfectly acceptable. And now that Cold Light Seer, even though it's buffed up uh, thanks to the earlier minion, you don't really want to play it. You want to use that to buff up some of those the other minions that are already on the board, right? But you need to start contesting what this now. I think it's probably the play. I think the fact that it's got higher stats right now is important. And the Murloc War Leader, although it's not giving health anymore, it's uh, you know it's probably going to be more relevant later on. Maybe you'll need to stick a couple of Murlocs on the board and then trade up against something like a Doppelgangster Evolve. Whereas the extra health from Cold Light, it would probably just be devolved as soon as you play it. I mean, three mana, three four is pretty silly. It's basically a spider tank, isn't it? Oh, it is, but it's, it's a fish. Card. But it's a fish. It's a fish tank. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dark Cultist was even sillier, wasn't it? It was sillier. Kabul Talon Priest is still very silly. Very silly. <laughs> silly, but necessary, I feel. I feel sometimes you need these, these cards to get you back into the game, and without them, maybe aggro decks would just get a little bit out of control. I think that's one of the things that's so great about Hearthstone at the moment is so many minions are high health, low attack. It means you've got better comeback mechanisms. It means trades become more interesting. Just leads to a healthier metagame, I think. So for Lemon now, still a relatively awkward turn. All of his turns so far have felt a little bit awkward, uh, to be honest. What and he hasn't, do? of course, changed his hero power to Murlocs as well, so he we right. can't just get the Murloc out and use a Rock Pool Hunter on it. I'm struggling to see an optimal play. It, they all look a bit ugly. It's just Megasaur and pray there's no Jade Lightning. I think I'd probably agree with this. You know, you're in a bad situation, so you have to start taking risks. Uh, because, you know, you're in a bad situation now, but you could turn it around very easily. Finger on the following turn, maybe with a top deck of Spike Ridge Steed to really pull this game back in your favor. Feels like a really nice way to start pulling it back. Because, you know, if there's none of the power cards like Aya or Doppel Evolve from Cold Hands, uh, the Paladin here from Lemon has a really good shot of just pulling it back with some powerful Murlocs. Yeah, powerful Murlocs. Cold Hands might get a Murloc of his own with Primal from Totem. Uh, he's trying to figure out the best way to trade in here, but it looks like he's just going to use everything and then start building up a board yet again. He wants to get into a position where he's got a wide enough board that if a Bloodlust does come out, he can just jam so much damage into Lemon's face that he can't come back from it. Because really for Cold Hands, you are worried about the late game from mm -hmm. this Murloc Paladin. As you said earlier, there is a lot of that end game, uh, those end game cards that can be very punishing, that could be very damaging to Cold Hands. Kind of weird how for Cold Hands here, you know, he it seemed like he's been in such a dominant position since right at the start of the game, but he's on a lower health total. They're on basically even cards, and he's not that much far behind on board. He'll probably be falling behind it. So this is why from Lemon, I like just throwing out the highest stated minion on Megasaur on the previous turn, oh, and just going that. with the Finger on a turn where he's really not that far behind. Only three attack on the board is really not that threatening at all. And this is uh, 
a fairly obvious devolve. I think if these are the targets that you're looking at for devolve in your opposition hand, of course, oh. Spike Ridge something that Spike Ridge steeded. Mm. Is that the right way to say it? A Spike Ridge steeded? Spike Ridge steeded. That has been steeded. Besteeded. Mm, one that has been mounted by a Spike Ridge. Uh, I think it's the other way it's around. Other I think a, you, a, you mount, mount the spike ridge. Spike, okay, yeah. just, just clarification. No. I mean, you do what you want, mate. It's a free country. I'm not here <laughs> to judge. Is it? Is Azeroth a free country? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Deathwing rules Azeroth. <laughs> well, did for a while, anyway. Uh, looks like Cold Hands isn't going to opt for the Devolve. Maybe he's going to... Yeah, he's, he's worried about the, the spike ridge. And, I mean, we can see from Lemon that's... Given Lemon's hand, it's probably not the right play just I mean maybe it is even so because you have such a high chance of you know a blessing of kings a spike ridge seed a Tyrion a bone mare being picked up there's so many buffs available that yeah I mean he's probably right that the devolve he just has to kind of pray that the finger doesn't pull out anything too bad he's got the option of maelstrom portal on the following turn which should be able to deal with a very nice amount uh, of the health on the murlocs that are going to be summoned from this hey arcane golem still a card oh yeah I've seen that bad boy in a while it used to haunt a few dreams yeah, I uh, loved that deck, the Eloise uh, combo warlock, mm. where it was just with arcane golem and double power overwhelming, faceless. Oh, very did spicy. You, did you happy with it? Mm -hmm. It's always good. So I think Cold Hands probably has said to himself mm. here that I'm going to be able to devolve this next turn. Yeah, uh, he's saying. Yeah. All right, I'll let him put stuff on the board because I have the combination of Maelstrom Portal. Maybe I'll even be able to get a Wrath of Air Totem uh, to get two damage off. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty important devolve here. Flame Tongue Totem Ooh. does help with trades, though. Man, okay. So now you probably actually have the liberty of saving the devolve because, you know, like I was saying, it's such a valuable resource in this matchup against Tyrion, uh, Spike Ridge, uh, Blessing of Kings, all that stuff. That If you go Flame Tongue Totem mm. uh, and the Maelstrom Portal, I guess, you could kill off a lot of what's going on here. So, so hmm... I'd be tempted to roll a Hero Power first, just in case you do get Wrath of there, and that might change your decision making slightly, but Cold Hands is clearly going down the route of, I want to just kill everything. Okay. Fair enough. And you know, if he's going to go about it that way, this is the way to do it. Get rid of the five mana minion first, so it doesn't get a random four drop. And even with there the pig go. off the top. Just a little pig to clear everything up as well. I mean, maybe you actually just kill him with... Ah, oh, okay, so he could have gone with the Arcane Golem because there's probably not, not going to be a Consecrate or Drake in the deck. Um, but yeah, as long as he's clearing everything off is the main thing here to play around that exact bone there. Now Lemon. It seems like he's on the back foot a little bit, but Cold Hands is running out. He's just going to top deck better. You know, the Paladin just does that in the late game. You've got uh, Tyrion, Tarim, Bone Mare, maybe a Curator if that's in the deck, maybe Stonehill Defenders. Master of Evolution is a pretty high-value card just to get off the top. There. It is, but you need to clear off this Scalebane. Yeah. 100%. Uh, so that means you can't evolve your Arcane Golem shortly. You can kill off everything once Patches is summoned uh, and, and then, then go... Evolve the Corsair? Yeah. Or maybe the Hero Power that you summon. Yeah, because probably you... the Hero Power because yeah. the Corsair at least has some sort of attack value and two health as well. Seems like that's what he's going for. Just needs to have stuff on the board to fight back against the minions that are going to be coming down from Lemon. And although I said, oh, and Flame Tongue's actually pretty good here. Uh, Ooh, but, but then I something to just plop that Bone Mare on is really important here for Lemon. Yeah. Bone Mare's going to plop. I hate it when Bone Mare plops <laughs> all over the board. All over the Happens street. regularly. Yeah. This really wasn't one of the cards that people foresaw being so dominant uh, when it was first announced. People certainly saw it as being a powerful Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's now included in the majority of decks. It is one of the meta-defining cards. I think uh, I saw a couple of review streams where people were... <laughs> I was trying, trying, to, see, I was trying to see the card again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hands had his head in his. Well, there's a flame tongue. Hand. I see that. Is that the flame tongue? That's is that what it is? Tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's definitely a flame I tongue. I wonder why. Uh, but that. Oh, because it was the joke I made last week. Cold hands, flame tongue. Because that. <gasps> see. That's like his slogan. You're relevant. <laughs> He's making jokes based on you. Thanks, mate. God, you've made it. <laughs> I wish I would make it. I'm here dressed as a woman. <laughs> I'm <laughs> dressed as a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you think would be weirder if we were to walk the streets together tonight? 
Oh, well, I mean, I'm wearing a crop top basically made out this of a cardi meant to be disguised as a, as a dress. It so. is lucky we can't see your bottom half. Very lucky. For many reasons, but Ken Bloodhoof is an uh. absolute blooming amazing top deck uh, for Cold Hands, which may just swing this back in his favor. Oh, man. The Murloc Paladin, I take back what I said. I mean, usually I would expect it to top deck better than the uh, the Shaman here, but in this particular instance, that has not been the case. Uh, it's not over, though. You've got the uh, Bone Mare, which trades really nicely against the the Cairn Blood Hoof, and then you can just kind of clear up with the rest of your stuff. Saving the Grim Scale Chum, you don't have any combos in your deck for Vile Spine or any nonsense like that, so you could save it for the buff, but... Yeah, I guess just getting it out on the board probably makes more sense. You just need to be fighting back against every single minion because as soon as Bloodlust or Flame Tongue comes down, you're just dead if you don't kill off everything. Yeah, so he... That's the decision now for Lemon. Is is he competing for board or is he competing just not to Which die? Which path to choose? Which sometimes <laughs> means the same thing. <laughs> and in this situation, it probably does. I mean, I guess it's worth considering with, what, 8, 11 damage you can push to face. I mean, that's, I'm doing quotation marks here, setting up two-turn lethal, even though your opponent can obviously trade. Uh, but yeah, he's choosing to take the other line that I was thinking of, just going for the highest value trades. And now there's no way to kill off the Grimscale Chum, unless you want to take a lot of damage on your Cairn. And there's kind of karma within the Hearthstone world of a one-drop for a one-drop. It was interesting, though, because the thought process I would have for Lemon making that trade is you don't die to Bloodlust, but he would have still died to Bloodlust regardless because mm -hmm. uh, there still would have been 10 damage. Cool. Uh, these still aren't the best cards to be drawn. I guess getting a secret can be very helpful in maintaining this board. Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. Repentant? Yeah. Do you play Repentance in the fear of them getting something big? The thing is, what are they going to play that's that thing big? Like, thing from below? It's... Okay, he's going for it. I mean, he's clearly done the matter and figured out how it works. But if he'd gone for... Yeah, I mean, he could have gone for Noble Sacrifice and taken the hit from the Cairn if he decided to kill off the Blood Cell Corsair. But instead, he thinks it's worth just getting rid of the Cairn completely and praying that the next minion that comes down from Cold Hands is a decently healthed one. Yeah. And now Cold Hands may be able to get some sort of idea about what secret this is, or at least get closer to... Uh, realizing what secret it is. Because he's killed a minion. He basically knows what it he is there. Do, yeah. yeah. Your opponent never picks eye for an eye, and that's ruled out Noble Sack Redemption and Getaway Kodo. So the only one I believe left, uh, if you think about it reasonably, is Repentance. Mm, Blessing of Kings actually isn't too bad. Yeah, that's pretty nice. A 4 4 charge, effectively. I mean, you can't divvy it up to trade more effectively, but just getting something powerful on the board, it's just something. You know. <laughs> yeah, at least there is a devolve to answer it from Cold Hands, but you feel like the longer this goes on... Oh! oh! <laughs> yeah, and rightly celebrating as well. I was saying the longer this goes on, you yeah. like to swing in favor of Lemon, but actually this Bone Mare could swing this game right in the Cold Hands. This is not over, though. There are still fantastic top decks for Lemon. Tarim would be insane. Tyrion would be pretty fantastic. Curator, if that's in the deck, would be good. Anything just uh, of, like, six cost or higher would be really good for him. And even though it's a 5-1, it is protected by this taunt here. So Cold Hand's relatively comfortable. And uh, that's it. The draws have not been right for Lemon. We were saying that there are big things at the end, but Cold Hand's <laughs> celebrating going 2-1 up here. And actually, he's, he's shouting pretty loud. He's pretty happy about this one, as he should be. It's very important. It is important for him. It's a big old deal. Going up two and one uh, in the Prem is a really nice way to set the tone for going forward, hopefully getting up to those three victories to secure your place in the finals. Um, but that, that game really didn't go the way I was expecting it to after turn five, because usually I'd favor the Shaman in that matchup because of their powerful early game control. But because it was going very, very even for the majority of the ways there, uh, I would expect the Paladin to pull it through because of cards like Tarim, Bone Mare, and Tyrion, but they just weren't found. Apparently Twitch chat are asking why my mum's casting <laughs> instead of me. Um, don't know if she's going to be offended or happy uh, about you saying that she looks this beautiful. <laughs> Um, but and has this much of a tash. This, yeah, the facial hair bit is the the, the tad that, that might worry her a little bit. Um, if you have just joined us, we are of course dressed up for Halloween. It is a, oh, a lovely night of trick or treating. Uh, I've made sure I've turned all the lights off in my house so that kids don't knock because you know I'm that kind of guy. Nice. 
I bet my dad's going to be doing the same routine he's been doing for 21 years of where he's got like a fake hand and he gives children sweets on it and then it falls off when they take the sweets. Classic. A classic. Just gets funnier every year. Love that. Dad. Love that. Great Darok dad. <laughs> uh, so we're going to see Big Priest here. Now we had a brief discussion before the stream went live, Darok. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We talk before the stream goes live. Oh, yeah. I know. It is a privilege. Just two guys. Uh, we were saying about Big Druid maybe being a thing nowadays and yep. Big Priest sort of falling out of favour, but here it is. Do you think that this is a good choice for Cold Hands? Well, I mean, you put it in the deck because when it high rolls, it destroys J Druid and Kazakas Priest, which are two of the most uh, prevalent decks uh, in the meta. But the thing is, Reporting with... I mean, it's it's always a deck that can just, you know, not do very well. If it doesn't find Barnes or doesn't find the removal against aggro, you're really going to suffer. And because we're seeing more Dragon Priest, more big Druid, stuff like that, the traditional lineup is kind of starting to break apart, especially in the ESL Premiership. Uh, so I think big, big Priest is not the deck I would bring. I would bring Kazakus Priest or Dragon Priest. Um, but in this particular instance, it's looking like it might just get the job done. Barnes on four to get the, you know, the train rolling. You've got Shadow Word Pain to deal with the Murloc War Leader, Mass Dispel to deal with Spike Ridge Steed, Greater Healing Potion to get you back up to a high health total. Most of the things that Cold Hands needs are available here. Yeah, most being the key word. Yeah. Because uh, not quite all not of everything. the tools there. He needs to get something to revive this minion yeah. that uh, ev evidently dies from Barnes. Uh, of course, Yasharaj would be the best pull possible yeah. for Cold Hands here. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm sure Lemon will be very aggravated when Barnes does come down, as everyone usually is on turn four. Yeah, I think that's kind of the way it goes. I think, like, turn, you know, one game in a row, Barnes coming down on four, yeah, whatever, you know, you deal with it. I think for every time after that, it's like uh, exponentially grows the mm. amount of ca uh, chairs you'll be destroying. Yeah, I think if there was a graph of Barnes on four, uh, compared to chairs destroyed, yeah, it would definitely rise, wouldn't it, game I, by game? I think it would go up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'd be worried if it went down. Tonight, Maybe for some people they just accept it. They accept it's going to happen. Is Lemon going to accept anything big and Lich King? Hey, yeah. That's pretty good. It's pretty good if you can get something to revive it, right? Ooh, and Death and Decay is a pretty fantastic card to get off of it as well. Three damage AOE for three mana. I would play that card. Would you? I would play that card. You know, that is some solid advice for Cold Hands as well. <laughs> a better Lightning Storm with no downside. It is going to be really handy to buy him a little bit more time whilst he just searches for those extra cards. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cold Hands here. And of course, he does just have the Master Spell if he doesn't want to panic too much if something like a Blessing of Kings comes down here. And that's what, you know, Death and Decay has filled one of the two weaknesses that Cold Hands had in his hand, which was no board clear and no way to revive minions. He's now got one of the board clears in Death and Decay. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that he actually hasn't got any of his other board clears if he's playing the most up-to-date lists I've seen, because I know uh, Zelay was messing about with a Big Priest list where you run not only the Pint Size Potion and Shadow Word Horror, but also uh, the Circle of Healing uh, in addition to the sh uh, Embrace Shadows, which gives you such a high amount of board clears whilst keeping your minions to only Barnes and the big stuff. Lemon actually choosing... Is he going to trade into Barnes? He should do. Yeah. yeah. Get, yeah, yeah. get everything off the board. There you go. Don't let anything live. You've got to be relentless. Uh, Shadowwood Horror. Whoa. That's even more removal for Cold Hands. I mean, I'd be half tempted just to use that here and now rather than the Death and Decay. Mainly because it clears everything. Dark. Yeah, you kind of got to think about what scales better into the late game, though. Uh, pint sized Potion, if picked up, would obviously make uh, Shadow Word Horror the one you really want to keep. But I guess even though you're looking to face more and more five health minions with Scalebane and Bone Mare coming down, you probably throw down the Shadow Word Horror because that could be completely useless later on. Yeah, and you're also concerned at all times against a Paladin of leaving anything on the board because yeah. of the amount of buffs that they can come out of the hand uh, from Lemon. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely something that is worth considering, and that's why Cold Hands is uh, stroking the beard of his. Of course, he does have Shadow Word Pain as well as a follow-up. All the removal is there, and yes, okay, he got Barnes, but he hasn't been able to bring that Lich King back to life. I think that's been in the saving grace for Lemon here. It's there, though. It's banked away, uh, waiting for the Eternal Servitude to come down and just bring it straight back to life. And now with Dragonfire Potion oh as well. He might not even need the Eternal Servitude. Just getting him the time to get up to Obsidian Statue and Ysera. 
uh, he might just be able to clear off the board every turn until then. And this can be a very... I mean, not just Paladin. Wait, did he just pass? No, I think that's a spectator bug. <laughs> no. Yeah, okay, that he must would, have played, that he would must be have played something there. completely insane. I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. completely lost my train of thought, because <laughs> I was like, he just went, nah, nah, I'll just pass this turn, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't need this turn six, do I? I don't know if Lemon sounds like that. Do I look way. like some kind of mug? Yeah, I, I don't know. Is Playing he from London, do you think? I don't know where Lemon's from. I'll find out. That house doesn't look very Londonish. No. I wonder if he's had any trick-or-treaters during this game. I think he probably lives so rurally it would be a... It does look like a... Like a call the local Bobby situation. Like a cottage, doesn't it? Very cottagey. Mm. I like that. Uh, we will sort out the potential spectator bug, if it is a spectator bug. Uh, I'll get one of the admins just to double-check that for us. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we are having issues with Lemon's POV once again. So it was just the curator that came down. Yeah, there it and is. And I think what I was saying that not just as a paladin is this it is this frustrating, but any kind of deck that you're playing against Big Priest when they manage to high roll Barnes and then have the removal to follow oh, yeah. up as well. It, it just seems like you can't do anything to stay in the game. Well, that's the thing. It's when uh, Big Priest gets exactly what it wants. I mean, this isn't exactly what it wants. There was no eternal servitude, but close to it, uh, it's, you know, you struggle to win. And in the same way from Lemon, if it had been the perfect Murloc mm. curve, it probably would have been difficult for Cold Hands to win because Barnes on four might have just been too slow. Mm. But now options for Lemon because that curator was four attack couldn't be removed from uh, the Priest. Yep. It means that you have the possibility to play Bone Mare if you would like here. Uh, but that does mean putting it above four attack, and that yep. is why Lemon is avoiding that situation, and instead he's just building up a bit of a board. I think the thing is, going for Bone Mare is just too weak to end win. Like, you can't risk that. Your opponent's got a whole bunch of cards that they haven't played. Like, all the five cards on the left have been in his hand since the start of the game. Um, so I think you want to make a board here that's resistant to Anduin, but also resistant to board clear removal. Uh, so this is now resistant to Dragonfire Potion to an extent, uh, because the uh, the Curator will still stay alive. And to be honest, given how weak you are the vast majority of the time to Dragonfire Potion, this is about as good as you can expect to do. Two repentances and two games for Lemon. Not often you see that. It makes sense. It does make versus sense. Versus a big priest. There are literally no other minions now that have less than eight health. And now you can use the Shadow Visions to try and find... A, there we go. There's a Shadow Essence there, if you would like it, uh, just to get something else on the board. And then you can follow it up with a, a Ysira or, of course, an Obsidian Statue. You don't have any way of telling what secret this is, though. Yeah, I wonder if you go with the Silence, actually, because Shadow Essence... I just think that's unnecessary value at this point. You've got a good chance of actually just drawing naturally uh, Shadow Essence, Eternal Servitude, or just a big minion. But I think going for the Silence to deny Bone Mare, Blessing of Kings, and uh, Spike Ridge Steed value is probably a little bit of a safer route. I've actually gone yeah. for the Shadow Word Horror here. Okay. Neither option we were looking at. Yeah, so he's just more concerned about removing as much as he can off this board. I, I mean, I like Shadow Essence because I liked searching for Yasira. Fair and enough. Getting a Yasira on the board, but I guess that was me being uh, an optimist. Or getting Yasira. Getting Yasiraj, sorry. Yasiraj, sorry. Is yeah. what I meant. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. both begin with Y. And an S. And yeah, and they're words, aren't they? They are both words. Yeah. I know how much <laughs> you hate them. <laughs> they bloody do, you know? <laughs> they really aggravate me. They get right under my tongue. Which path to uh, and again, Lemon in a situation where he may be reluctant to play this Bone Mare. And if you're not going to play the Bone Mare, what do you do? Maybe Hero Power into Scalebane? <laughs> Scalebane also sucks versus Tarim. Like if you or oh, against uh, Anduin, sorry. Like if you get lucky, uh, it will hit the Murloc, I guess, instead of the Curator, and then yeah. both two of your minions survive against Anduin. It's pretty risky, but maybe you have to take that risk. But then again, if you're going to take a risk, maybe just take a risk that he doesn't have it and just go for the Bone Mare. Or uh, but. He is clearly thinking here, I'm too afraid of Anduin. I'm not quite going to risk it. Pray for the 50-50 that my board is not left for Anduin. It doesn't work out for him, but it doesn't matter because there is no Anduin. No, no Anduin indeed. Instead, though, there is plenty of removal options for Cold Hands, and now he can finally use the Eternal Servitude if he wants to bring back the Lich King. Uh, but does he? Does he actually prefer maybe using the Dragonfire Potion? Why wouldn't he use it before? He's going to do that. Yeah. Okay. This is the option. Just get an 8-8 on the board. Uh, it's... Uh, I, don't, I don't know how much I like this, actually. Um, 
Well, I guess it's probably the best you could do. Just it's so weak to what's on the board. I guess though, if you're using just the Lich King to clear off what's actually on board here, uh, following up with the Obsidian Statue, if they have a weak board afterwards, I guess feels pretty good. Well, I mean, he just wanted to he wanted to get rid of the dragon on the board, right? Yeah, of course yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. Dragon fire potion because it's a dragon. Fair enough. Uh, that old what would rubbish, you but. Do? When you're presented with the option of bringing an AA back to life for four mana, it's hard to turn down. Very true, very true. Um, so now with the potential high roll uh, of getting poisonous here off the gentle Megazord, definitely the adaptation he's going to be looking for here. Doesn't hit it, but plus three attack. Oh, maybe you go for Divine Shield, though. I think I like Divine Shield, you know, Darok, because you're worried about all the removal that is possible uh, potentially there. Yeah. But if you go for plus attack, you're not vulnerable to Shadow Word Horror all of a sudden. But yeah, I think this was probably the better play because you're less vulnerable to Dragon Fire um, and I guess Circle of Healing with Embrace Shadows. And next turn, he does have a possibility of playing Tarim as well. Oh, yeah. And really wow. pushing okay. some damage to Fair face. Enough. So that explains trying to keep these minions alive with the Divine Shield. That's a very good reason to go for Divine Shield. And if Cold Hands does just answer with a simple Obsidian Statue or something like that here, not only is it going to turn into just one health, there's just going to be so much damage that Lemon can push through with. I think that's why it has to be uh, Shadow Word Horror. And then, do you go Army of the Dead? Is it worth it? You probably just burn five cards from your deck. No, I... Don't like this it. is the thing. When I saw Army of the Dead announced as one of these cards that comes from the Lich King, I was like, okay, this is this is good. Yeah. I think this is a good card, but I have never seen it perform I mean, well. The game they showed it in on the announcement stream, it pulled like four minions from the deck yeah. and just won them the game on the spot. But since then, I mean, it's not that good in Big Priest because if it only summoned minions from your deck, it would obviously be insane in this deck. Uh, but now that there is, uh, what, only an Obsidian Statue is the only minion left in the deck? Uh, it sucks. Like, you have a chance of maybe playing an Obsidian mm. Statue for six mana, but that's probably just not going to be played from here on in. And has Cold Hands been able to attack with a minion yet? I don't think he has. He still has no idea what the secret is. Oh, yeah. Well, he hasn't. He well, hasn't he's played, been, he's, he hasn't he's played a minion. He's summoning yep. So he, ha he hasn't played a minion, of course, because otherwise it would have gone down to one health. Very true. And he's only got, mm. of course, these big old minions to play. So he's just still playing this removal game of hoping he can battle onto the board at some point. But there seems to be constant answers from Lemon. He keeps building a board back up himself. And this is what, I think this is just what Murloc Paladin does. There's still so much staying power here because he's played a very slow, reserved game, you know, where he went for a turn where he goes, hero power, Valfin, hero power, just milking out all the value he can from his uh, cards, which I think is probably the way to do it. Doesn't want to go for Tarim on this turn, obviously, because it's so good at reducing the, stat, the stats from your opponent's stuff, not only bumping up the stats of you, on your own. So I think it's maybe you've just seen a Dragonfire potion. So I think you'd be pretty happy with going Hero Power Bone Mare, uh, but instead wants to spread it out a little bit thinner once again, taking it so, so slow here. Yeah, taking it slow, which is always a risky uh, situation, especially against Big Priest, because you know yep. what's coming down. But I guess with Repentance being available, he feels relatively confident. Uh, but I mean, if an Obsidian Statue comes down, that's still a possibility of removing one of your big minions off the board by yeah. just killing it off with its Death Rattle. So this is quite a weird play from Lemon because he could have just stopped and not played the Blessing of Kings. And then that what that would have said to me is, OK, I'm going to take a weak turn here because I'm expecting my opponent to play something big. So I'm going for Tarim and then I'll play the oh. Blessing of Kings afterwards. But because he's buffed up one of his minions to quite a high level, it has the downside of being not as good if Tarim comes down on the following turn. But kind of has the benefit of being less vulnerable to stuff like Pint Size Potion, Shadow Word Horror, stuff like that. Yeah, I think if Repentance wasn't in play, I think he would have been more obliged to go for just a weak right. play into Tarim. But the fact he can deal with whatever comes down, Lemon was like, well, that I'll put sense. something on the board here. And it might just be a Bone Mare turn. I like that play. And yeah, actually, with the second Repentance here, he can once again, uh, you know, put down a pretty respectable board um, and just say to your opponent, you know, what are you going to do about this? I'm just going to play Repentance. Any minion you play just dies. And I'll have another answer to the next big minion you play. Because he's still got Taran. This is really nicely done by Lemon. Yep. 
It was looking all pretty for Cold Hands after getting Barnes on four, even uh, getting Death and Decay as well from the Lich King early on. We were saying, well, he's in a good, uh, good spot here. But now, just what one obliterate to deal with one of these minions? Um, Army of the Dead is going to do pretty much nothing at this point. You have a chance of summoning what one Obsidian statue. Uh, same goes for the Shadow Essence. So is there a way you can use Shadow Essence plus Obliterate? Well, you take, what, six uh, damage if you kill off the Murloc here with Obliterate. Uh, so it'd have to be something like, yeah, I mean, I guess you could go Obliterate, Shadow Essence, and pray that the, what, 5-5 five, five would I keep you alive? You'd be down to, no, you'd just die you'd then. you just die either way. Yeah. Actually, it might kill off the, uh, the big Murloc there. So I guess there's a chance you survive if your opponent has basically nothing by going Obliterate, Heal, Shadow Essence. But the safer play is probably Shadow Essence into Greater Healing Potion. Yeah. Yeah. That's the safe way. Yeah. Obliterate can't keep you alive, unfortunately. It was worth looking at, though. Now... Wow. Ooh, Spike Rich Seed, does that make a difference? So Sunkeeper Tarim, it seems like a no-go here, of course, because you've got so many big minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're playing a risky game, so using your hero power first here makes a lot of sense because it makes it more chance of killing off a 1-1 once the Obsidian statue dies, and then you can push more damage towards the face. Uh, that could be followed up by a Megasaur, of course, to actually look for lethal. Something like Wind Fury could help in this situation. So even playing the Megasaur first, I'm not, I, I wouldn't mind too much because that's another target you'd be happy with. So then you, you've got, if you attack in with the 6-6 uh, six, six Murloc here, you've then got three out of five targets you'd be happy with hitting. Or this way, either way, like, you know, you've got three out of five targets you're pretty happy with here. And with that one, that's fine. It's not the best one, obviously, but I think given how bad it could have been by killing off the 6-6 six, six or the Bone Mare there, you're pretty happy with this. So no option for lethal with Wind Fury or plus three attack here. But in the end, I think just plus three help or it is going to be fine. I can't see a way back for Cold Hands now. Yeah, I think I like going for plus one, plus one actually here, given that you've seen uh, so much dragon fire, it doesn't change any of the break points um, about, you know, it's more like these minions will now die to uh, Shadow Reaper Anduin, whereas they wouldn't have done before. Uh, but the fact that dragon fire was picked up off the top means that plus health would uh, actually not have made any difference either because all the Murlocs would have died. All the Murlocs would have died, but now he can take this seven damage. Uh, not two damage, Two sorry. damage, yeah. yeah. Uh, other way around. Doesn't work anything, does it? No. Sometimes these cards, they play tricks on me. <laughs> oh! Well, Absolutely fantastic for Lemon. This is what Murloc Paladin should have been doing. This is, you know, against the Shaman, it just wasn't getting these late game options. But now with Steed, Tarim, Tyrion, Ooh. Cold Hands doesn't even know how bad of a shape he's in. Shadow, uh, Shadow Reaper Anduin, of course, can deal with the 6-6, six, six, but then you're going to be facing 5 damage in the next turn. Yeah. Doesn't even go for it, but the Repentance is kind of going to punish him. He will definitely get an Obsidian Statue here, which I guess is uh, the main benefit of going for it here, because I guess, you know, if you want... if you. That is the best minion to be hit with a Repentance, actually, because if you're going with just Ysera or Obsidian Statue, that is just way too weak of a turn, and you probably just lose on the spot. So Taran being used, of course, you don't want to waste the Spike Bridge Steed, which your eyes might have automatically lent towards. Now, will Cold Hands hit anything good? Okay. Ooh, Yasharaj survives. That's the yeah. one minion it could have hit So that would have led to Yasharaj surviving. Hmm. Doesn't pull anything out of the deck anymore, obviously, but just that there's something on the board uh, is a nice little benefit. And now with Shadow Word Pain, you can kill off two of the minions here. Uh, oh, you can then go for Anduin just for the armor. You could go for Shadow Visions to try and find uh, an Eternal Servitude to bring back a Obsidian Statue, or just for the Greater Healing Potion to try and bring you out of range. But basically, Coltan needs to keep up with the powerful defensive options. Yeah, he's slowly staying in this. Lemon is uh, kind of top decking everything. Uh, Cold Hands was what I thought down and out until he drew, the, drew that Dragonfire potion. Of course, that has been the really big swing. This allowed him to even keep this game slightly competitive. Uh, there's an Eternal Servitude. Or do you go with the horror? You've got pint-sized horror here. You can just completely clear the board. You're left with a Yasharaj on board. How much health is he at? 
he would still be able to heal his own face there, and that's what he's going to go for. He's left at 12 health against an, just an Ashbringer and nothing else on his opponent's board. This is probably the way to do it. But at the same time, the Obsidian Statue coming back would have been so good. This is like a boxing match where someone just keeps falling down and just keeps getting back keep up getting over back and up. over. And just like on nine as well. The ref's trying to count them out, but they just keep answering. This is why I like Murloc Paladin. It's not just a straight up aggro deck. Lemon has built his deck to be blooming top heavy as well with Cairn, Curator, Tyrion, Tarim, Spike Ridge Steed, Bone Mares. It's insane how much late game there is in here. Uh, which is kind of why it's a little bit more understandable that he's not getting those insane early turns. He's clearly cutting back some of the early Murlocs to have this much late game in the deck. Now, at some point, Cold Hands might have to use Anduin just for the armor, but yep. then you don't get that positive effect of being able to heal every turn. But, of course, you do have the damage possibility every turn as well. Uh, Ysira has just been sat that there the whole game doing you. nada and may not even get the chance to see any play in this game now, because 9 mana is just such an awkward amount for the Priest, because you want to be healing every turn with this low. Yeah, I think the only time that Ysera is going to be coming down in this match is if Cold Hands is basically won anyway, or if Obsidian Statue is already on the board. And even then, it kind of seems a little bit unlikely. And so, because Lemon doesn't know... Oh no, wait, the... Yeah, it already survived the already turn. Survived turn, yeah. So he knows that there's no minions left in the deck. But he just wants to get rid of it. Just wants to get rid of it anyway. He wants to keep control of this board, uh, it would seem. Yeah, I guess... Well, okay, actually, because he knows that there's no minions in the deck, he knows there's an Obsidian Statue and a Ysera in hand. And so because there could be a Taunt coming down, the 3-3 might be able to clear up his board a little bit too effectively. So it probably is worth killing off the 3-3 uh, three, three there because you are going to be having to win this game through board control, it would seem. And now Lemon will just pray that this isn't going to hit Ken. It does not, it would seem. It doesn't, because he's able to blessing if kings it up, and that is a massive minion on the board. But because he's popping it up, Anduin's going to be able to kill it off once again. Lemon just makes a little whiff hit, and Cold Hands is able to come back with the Shadow Reaper Anduin. Do we think that was unnecessary? I think it... Yeah, you don't really need the blessings that. You've seen both Dragonfires, you've seen all the Shadow... Well, I guess... It you're basically not expecting to see pint-sized horror here. Yeah, I mean, I think it might have been... Um, if you don't Blessings it, you can just... You only deal four damage, right? So he's yeah. down to 16. You've still got... You would still have lethal next turn, providing nothing comes down to block your way, because you've got Spike Ridge Steed plus Blessing of Kings. I guess the, the thinking is, I'm going to be playing into Anduin at some point. If I'm going to win this game, I have to play either the Blessing of Kings or the Spike Ridge Steed, probably both. So I may as well just throw it down at the earliest possible opportunity when he's got the lowest chance of having Anduin. So it probably was worth it just because I think if he's going to win this game, he has to play into that at some point. Now the scary thing for Lemon is he's only on 8 health. And suddenly there's going to be a barrage of damage that can come out from Cold Hands thanks to that hero power. Barrage, nice, because Lemon's on Team Barrage. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, sometimes I'm not just a pretty face. A uh, pretty face, and... Uh, Whoa. Yeah. I tell you what, this wig is actually, like, it's getting in my eyes. Is, is it a bit itchy? A little bit. Are you a bit itchy? Yeah, hey, are I'm, you? I'm wearing a cardi with nothing underneath. Nothing? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Absolutely filthy. Now, does that point size potion allow... Uh, lethal for Cold Hands? No. No, not quite. Not quite. Uh, Eternal Servitude can't bring back anything that would allow it, uh, but anything's good here. Yeah, the Lich King, Obsidian Statue, all of them would have been perfectly good here. I suppose the Lich King makes sense because you can get things like uh, Death and Decay, Mortal Coil, Frostmourne, hell, whatever. And that does mean, with such a close, hard-fought game from Cold Hands, he wins it with his Big Priest, and it's going to be going up two series to one, while Lemon drops down one to two. Yeah, and very happy with it as well. Unfortunate for Lemon.